Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. In today's video, I just wanted to do a quick overview of a bunch of books that I recently picked up. Uh, I recently did a little like tour of a bunch of independent and used bookstores in New York City. And yeah, I just wanted to share some of my finds that I'm really excited about reading. And yeah, let's just get into it. So my first book that I picked up is Again, Maya Angelou, and this is All God's Children Need Traveling Shoes. And um, so this book, um, so I guess in my last video I talked about um, um, The Caged Bird Sings, which is the first autobiogra autobiographical work that Angelou has. Um, and this book kind of skips the next like three books um, in the series. So this is maybe the fourth or the fifth. And so this is when she has moved to Ghana and she's sort of reflecting about the experience of, I guess, like wrestling with her African roots for the first time of being in an African country and also with her son um, who suffers a pretty grave injury um, and kind of like dealing and wrestling with being a mother um, when your son has has just had like a, a life-threatening th accident. And yeah, I'm just really excited to read this book. And the reason why I picked it up is because I recently had a similar experience of not of a life-threatening accident, but of um, going back to the motherland, of going back to Nigeria for the first time in several years, and was obviously, as a result of that experience, having a lot of reflections about um, culture, about life growing up in the States, about family, about the joys and the burdens of family, um, about you know privilege and of uh, like sacrifice, uh, the sacrifice of my parents, but also the sacrifice of of, um, of the people from whom I descend in order to give me the life that I have today. And so I'm just very curious about the parallels and um, maybe just some of the similar themes that might come up. And I'm just very curious about you know what she is going to reflect on and what are the things that are going to stand out to her. I mean, obviously Ghana is a very different place from Nigeria, but I think that um, yeah, there may still be some parallels um, and similar reflections, obviously, because Angelo is someone who has grown up in the States as an African-American and is, you know, going to, to Ghana, is going to, to Africa for the first time. And yeah, so I just imagine that there will be some parallels with the experience that she writes about in this book and my own. And I'm just very excited to, to see and to, to, to get an, um, a little bit of insight into, into her perspective and her, her reflections. Yeah. So the next book that I have here is Woman, Race, and Class by Angela Davis. So I picked this book up actually as a recommendation from a subscriber. So thank you very much for that recommendation. It is very much appreciated. Um, and I thought that this book would just be a great introduction into Angela Davis's work, into her literature. Um, it is a book that was written in 1981. So it's giving a little bit more of a historical perspective as it analyzes the history and the current outcomes and the current state of the women's movement in the United States. I just think it'll be a really powerful and grounding piece of text as um, I'm sort of studying and trying to ground myself and just learn more about the intersections of race and class in whiteness into feminism, into elite feminism. And you know, I'm just very excited to get more and get more of a solid footing in Angela Davis and into her literature. And yeah, very excited. This will be the first one that I that I um that I read by Angela Davis. I have a few, uh, or I guess I have also have another book by her that I picked up. But yeah, very excited about this one. So the next one that I picked up is this novel Americana. And I know it's been pre pretty popular. It came out in twenty thirteen by Chimamanda Ngozi Adichie, and um, yeah, I'm just very excited to read this one because a lot of my very close friends have either read it or have been reading it um and have just found it to be like a very like fantastic piece of, uh, of fictional literature and um this it kind of deals with themes of immigration it's basically about two characters well not basically i mean i haven't read the book um but my understanding is that it's about, about a nigerian couple um and one partner leaves for america and then obviously is forced to deal with and grapple with and wrestle with, you know, being in a, in, in I guess, like a, a white country for the first time or moving to a white country and dealing with, you know, what it means to be perceived as 
um, African American, what it means to now be black in the United States. Um, and then the other partner moves to London, um, and again, is probably having, well, not necessarily a similar experience, but uh, moving to London and um, in a journey that I think is probably marked with its own difficulties and, um, and hardships. And yeah, I just think that it'll be a really good book to it'll be a really good piece of fiction to just have as I'm also reading these kind of more, um, I guess, like political works. And um, yeah, I'm just very excited to read this one. And I've gone, heard a lot of great things about it. And yeah, just a lot of my friends have been reading it. So I figured I'd give it a go. And I kind of just stumbled upon it in a used bookshop. And I just saw it and I was like, oh, okay. I mean, I wasn't planning on picking this up this weekend, but since it's there and I can get it for just a few dollars, you know, I might as well. Um, and yeah, I mean, there's nothing like picking up a used book, I think. Yeah, it's like the, it's, it's like the nicest thing, you know, because you get to see another person's reflections, what they wrote in the margins, the things that they were noticing, you know, a little bit of insight into someone else's journey as they were wrestling with the same, with the same text, which, yeah, is a strangely intimate phenomenon. Um, but... Yeah, so the next book that I have here is another Maya Angelou text, and this is Letter to My Daughter by Maya Angelou. The reason why I picked this book up is just because it's, yeah, Maya Angelou is just, it just has a lot to teach, um, quite simply. Um, obviously, as someone who is very wise and who has lived um, a life that has been marked with tons of up and downs and... Um, a lot of really unique experiences and has learned and has come out of each of those battles with um, um, with more strength and with more to teach to the world. And so, yeah, I'm just excited to read this book because I think it'll be a great um, little book to just kind of have on my desk to kind of get some of these like packaged life lessons and get some of these packaged, um, you know, little nuggets of, of insight, um, that I can just draw upon whenever I feel like it. Um, so yeah, no like big reason. I kind of just wanted to get some insights into, you know, Auntie Angelo's, um, life lessons. And yeah, I just imagine that this will be something that I find myself coming back to, um, as I try and integrate and take some of those lessons and integrate them into my own understanding, my own worldview and yeah the way I live my own life so yeah I'm just very excited and obviously you know you can never you can never have too much of Maya Angelou's like you know beautifully written very poetic um but yeah very poetic style of writing so also just excited for that as well okay the next book that I have here is another text by Angela Davis and so this is freedom is a constant struggle um so from what I've seen from reviews and from other people kind of leaving comments as they've read this book is that it's a collection of essays interviews and speeches um kind of talking about intersectionality talking about you know the connections between oppression around the world and also um struggles against state violence um within a country and yeah I'm just I think it'll be a really great continuation with um, to read after Woman, Race, and Class, and we'll just like really drill in those themes of intersectionality, of um, black feminism, of you know, kind of like analyzing like whiteness, and and just thinking I guess like more internationally and more globally about these themes of freedom and liberation struggles and social movements um, that are kind of going around, going on around the world, and so I'm hoping that um, that Davis in this book can provide. Um, I guess some of those like themes or some of those like parallels that sort of show up around the world um, as we are dealing and thinking about movements of freedom and liberation struggles. So yeah, very excited about this one and think it'll just be a great addition to the collection as well. And then finally, the last book that I have here is um, this book called White Fragility by Robin D'Angelo. So I think this book was really popular maybe a few years ago on the New York Times bestseller list. Um, my understanding is that this book is kind of a book written by a white woman for white people and kind of like the main argument or the main idea that it's talking about is the sort of defensiveness that um, tends to wash over or come over white people during discussions of race um, and sort of the dangers of 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 tolerating and 
of using that defensiveness in order to prevent oneself from expanding one's worldview, from considering other perspectives, especially from people of color, and also just getting, like, I think, white people to recognize how they participate in systemic racism, how they participate in a overall socialization that we are all brought up in that teaches us um, that whiteness is the standard and that whiteness is the norm and that the experiences, the identities of people of color are, are I guess, other than the norm or other than the standard. Um, and yeah, I, I guess really I'm just curious about this book that is written by a white woman for white people and to realize you know, that whiteness has meaning, that whiteness is, can be thought of as like, um, as like a social group, as, as like a class. And if you look at the hierarchy, the, the cultural hierarchies, you know, it's one where, you know, whiteness is at the top and, you know, kind of like blackness is at the bottom and all, all identities of people of color are kind of like below that standard of whiteness. And so, yeah, just, um, very curious about this book, very, I think it'll just be really interesting and I'm hoping that I can come away with, um, vocabulary and, wording and phrases and ways to continue to have these sort of discussions about race um, that hopefully circumvent or hopefully get, um, can avoid that sort of defensiveness or that, um, you know, we're all guilty in one way or another in this like system or we're all sort of participating in this like sort of like racist system. We're all participants in it and we kind of like have no choice and so the question isn't whether or not you know like i'm a racist or i'm not a racist it's more about how, where do i fall along this like continuum where do i fall along this continuum of um of you know <clears throat> being you know the worst depiction of a racist versus being more and more progressive and being more and more um someone who is fighting for and advocating and is active in the struggle for equality amongst all of these cultural hierarchies, um, amongst, you know, the, the, the cultural rankings uh, of, the, of the sort of races. I guess that's kind of how I would describe it. And yeah, just excited to read this book, hoping that, um, you know, maybe it'll teach me a few things, um, but I think it'll also just equip me with a lot of really helpful and useful vocabulary um, to kind of have these discussions and yeah, I'm just, just, just very curious about it and think it'll be, think, think it'll be a really, um, a really good one to, um, to just read as I'm also reading all these other texts. Um, but yeah, that's kind of everything I had. Um, those are the books that I picked up last weekend when I was kind of doing my little stroll or my little tour of used and independent bookshops in New York. And yeah, super excited to read all these. I think maybe I'll do a review. Maybe I'll do some reviews on some of them. Um, I probably won't do a review for every single one of them, but yeah, I'm just excited to get started and to read them. And I'm sure I will talk about them as I do my videos of you know what I read this month or um, or you know what I've been reading recently. And yeah, that's kind of like everything I have. So thank you very much for watching, and I will see you in the next video.